Welcome, Prowl Nation. Welcome to Lunchtime Detroit Lions Sock. It's brought to you by Lions Nation Unite. Ragnow out for the year. Can anything else go wrong? Maybe we shouldn't ask that question. Right. <laughs> we got a bunch of topics. The Lions sign a new cornerback. Panay Sewell's in the news today and Jalen Rees. Maybe, but before we get to all that, I got to kick it to my main man, a man of steel himself, Kurt Steele. What up, though? Welcome to the show, people. You know who we are. We are Detroit Lions on the Prowl. You're home. For Detroit Lions news and rumors, and as always, we need you to go ahead, you know, get that mouse or get your fag finger on the on the screen or whatever, and click the subscribe button, click the like button, leave a comment. All of those things helps us with this YouTube algorithm and gets this content in front of more Lions fans just like yourself, you know. And get on the bus, Gus. Get on this plane, Wayne, and join us with the March of Ten Thousand right here on Detroit Lions on the Prowl. But before we get into too much stuff. It's time to bring in the third man of the crew. You know who he is. He's the coolest man on the show. And the ladies love him. My man, Mr. LL Cool Torrance. What's up, my guy? Good morning, Proud Nation. What's up, everybody? Hey, let's get this thing started. Right now. Lego. Detroit Lions talk, baby. Welcome back to the show, people. And uh, right now we're going to talk about some sad news in Detroit Lions Nation here. Lions on the prowl. Let me kick it to my main man, Kurt, about the injury to Frank Ragnar. All right. So we know that he had season ending surgery on that toe. So it was serious. If you remember back a few days ago when we had the show late last week, I said that is this injury to Frank Ragnow more serious than we thought? This is right after the Bears game. I'm like, I think it is because we're signing another offensive lineman to come into this roster. I'm mm -hmm. like, eh, I don't know. And then all of a sudden, Ragnow's on the IR. And now he's had season-ending surgery. Uh, prayers, first of all, to Frank Ragnow. You know, you know, he just signed a contract. But I think uh, it's one of those things where – we just having one of those seasons, and it's a nest man up mentality. But I will have yep. to say, uh, Brown's doing a pretty good job. I don't hear a lot of noise coming out of you know out of that where he's making a mistake, missing a block, or you know something of that nature. The run game still to be seems to be chugging along. There's no really bad snaps, you know. what I'm saying between uh, you know, exchange between him and golf, you know. what I'm saying besides his baby hands, but there's there's not a really you know a really a big drop off. There's you know. That's what you want when you have a next man up mentality. You're bringing guys in where you don't want to hear a whole bunch about the guy who's coming in to play because he's making a whole bunch of mistakes. You just want them, especially on the offensive line, you just want it to be kind of seamless. But, you know, Frank Ragnow, you know, we all know he's a cornerstone piece to the Detroit Lions for years to come. Top center in the NFL rated by many entities. So I just hate it for him. I hate it for him when you see injuries like this. And this has been a rash of these things that has been season ending. You know, Quintez Cephas out with that collarbone season ending. He's going to have to have surgery. Uh, mm. Romeo Aquara, Achilles. Yeah. Jeff Okuda, Achilles. So, and you look at these injuries and you're like, man, I mean, how much more can we deal with? But you have to have the mentality of next man up. Yep. Everybody knows their backups for a reason because they're not as talented as the guys that are in front of them. But you ask them to come in and play hard and give you all the effort that they can give you. And that's what we have right now in Detroit. We just have to have some just some I mean, just some Murphy's law on this thing. <laughs> we whatever can go wrong is it seems to be happening right now in Detroit. And it's uh, I just feel so bad for Frank Ragnar because I think he was having a really good season before this mm -hmm. happened. I mean, besides the the one where the during the coverage and he snapped the ball when he thought he said hike and he said Mike. So <laughs> that's the only thing that I, I, I look at that that was a, a, a faux pas for him. But uh, big prayers up to Frank Ragnar again. Big bank Frank get better soon, my dude. Yeah, for real. You know. It, it is next man up mentality. And Evan Brown has played admirably. I'm not going to say he's the next coming of Frank Ragnow or anything, but he's held his own. 
you know, look at Jerry Jacobs had a pretty good game, you know, coming in. Mellon Fomo before he got hurt had a really good game. You know, next man up, next man up, next man up. We trade Jamie Collins. Well, which everyone thought was a good thing, <laughs> but next man up, next man up, Derek Barnes, you know, uh, we just have a lot of depth at the defensive, uh, like, like uh, edge, edge rusher, like Julian Aquara and a bunch of those guys, Charles Harris has stepped up, you know, all these people that, you know, we got in the off season, even at the wide receiver position, Quintez Cephas goes down, we got Hodge showing up. I mean, we have more talent. So, you know, guys, this is going to be a long, hard season. Uh, we have lost a lot of players to injury and, and it, it's going to be a painful season, but we are, we have some people on the way. We'll talk about that in a little while, but yeah, that's, that's my thoughts on this is, you know, there's a lot of good coaching going on in, in Detroit in years past. When you, when we lost our main guy, it was over. I mean, it was just, we got no production out of that that spot a lot of times yep. uh, except for the, except for um, Mike Ford. I thought Mike Ford filled in fairly admirably for us mm -hmm. uh, a while back, but it seems like this coaching staff really has a way of developing talent. And I like that. What do you got, LL? Um, yeah, I agree with you on that, Jim. I think uh, especially, uh, you know, uh, Kurt's guy, Aubrey Pleasant, he, you know, I don't, I'm not going to give him all the credit, but he is, he gets a lot of credit for the, for the development of uh, the Rams secondary. Uh, over in uh, over in LA and St. Louis, so you know, um, shout out to those guys for coaching them up. The, whoever the next guy is, but my question I want to ask to you to you guys is outside of the ones like um, you know Big O'Cora, you know, because that's a that's 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 going to take some time. Um, but in middle school, uh, middle school on the very first practice, you know, uh, like before the team is even, you know, it's just y'all out there throwing the football around playing. I happen to break our quarterback's collarbone. And he was able to come back and play in the middle school season. So my question is, with like Cephas and Ragnow and things like that, if we were like maybe 4-0 or 3-2 and two or, you know, 5-0, and 0, do you think these guys would be coming back this season? You're, you got a point there. I, I think that they're going to be more careful because of the fact that we're not good. You know, it's, 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 it's a lot this year. Probably already. And oh. I don't want to use the word tank, but it may be – like, yeah, and you're right. It may be a it may be a lost season, and maybe that was the that was the thing in the first place, you know. And I know they've been very careful with DeAndre Swift. I know they've been very careful with TJ Hawkinson, and it's possible that why that's why he's not getting the targets. Maybe he's maybe he's playing a decoy right now because of the fact that he's injured. They don't want to give him a lot of hits or whatever. I just don't know. I mean that that's curious to me as well. But um, I just um. Yeah, to answer to answer your question, I think like Jim said, I think there's being cautious. I think that they're, but I, I think it's the the makeup of the staff as well. When you have a whole bunch of former players, maybe you're looking at they're looking at some of these guys, some of these things like I had someone rush me back from injury too soon and I got hurt again yeah. or things of that nature. So they're looking at it from that type of stance because you have a whole bunch of former players on this staff and they're like, I don't want this player to go through what I went through. Or if we can't get them back, let's go ahead and put them out there. But if we can't, let's make sure that we get them back to 100% because we don't want them out there risking themselves um, for a season that's going to be tough in the first place. And maybe uh, we can make sure we get them back 100% next season. You know, some yeah. some some of the long some, some of the longer term guys, some of the shorter term guys. You know, maybe we bring those if we can bring them back, we can showcase them maybe for another team where they can come back to compete for a slot for next season. But our guys that are we know we know we want them here for a while. We're gonna make sure we shelve those guys and we make sure we get them back yeah. healthy for next season. And I don't I don't want to I you know turf talk with with Rag now. That's that's serious. You know I know we know exactly how tough he is because last year what they were saying he played with a broke throat or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. So I know just how just how tough he is. And I'm you know just being a little kid, you know hearing turf toe on the TV. I never thought it was that serious until it got Deion Sanders. Mm -hmm. And you know. I thought, you know, Deion Sanders, in my mind, it said, Eric says, look, he was, you know, the most fantastic football player I've ever seen in my entire life. I was like, mm -hmm. a turf toe got him? And that, it was years and years that it affected him. So, you know, hopefully that won't happen here with Rag now, but I understand the severity of some yeah. of these injuries too. And, and my, my thing with Hawkinson, people keep saying, oh, he's missing. Well, I have my theory to that is, can't throw the ball to his damn self. So here's my thing. You you, you have to kind of put you put him in some, some situations where, you know, uh, 
he's the first read because right now Jared Goff's not going off his first read. So if he's not his first read on the play, um, let Jim say you have put a big flashing target on his back, you know, saying light his yeah. light his numbers and name up on the back of his jersey. So yeah, for real. Uh, so Jared Goff mm-hmm. can see him, but he can't throw the ball to himself, and you he can't put himself in position where you got to look at the other teams know they scheming against Hawkinson. They know he's the number one option, right? They know he's the – you look at our wide receiving core and you look at our tight ends, who's the number one option for out of the – you know, in the pass game? It's got to be T.J. Hawkinson. They're going to double and triple and make sure he's over the top and underneath and all this stuff for the coverage. So, uh, the and they're doing what they're supposed to do because you're supposed to take away the, the opponent's uh, uh, best option. So, that's what they're doing in the passing game. So, that's why I think T.J. Hawkinson – well, I will say this, to Jim's credit, uh, to my observation – he has spent more time on the sidelines in the last few games where I'm looking at I'm looking at at a play and I'm like, why isn't Hawkinson in the game right now? And he's sitting on the sidelines. So maybe they are kind of, you know, watching him and watching his time and giving him a little snap count and keeping him fresh because of injury. So, I mean, we'll see. Yeah. 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 I, ooh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, no, no, I don't got none. Oh, okay. Hey, hey, all right. So if you like this video, like the content, <laughs> like and share, you know, get on this March to 10,000 with us. And you know, we're brought to you by who manscaped.com. You know what I'm saying? We got them tools for your family jewels, baby. Go take care of them over there at manscaped.com. You get 20% off with the code D L O T P and free worldwide shipping. Hey, my man, Jim, what's your family discussion topic for today? You know, for proud nation. Oh, yeah. For Prowl Nation, we got how do you feel about Evan Brown's performance? It is kind of the next up uh, mentality, but Frank now, Ragnow's out for the year. What do you think about Evan Brown? Also, other people that have stepped up, Jer- Jerry Jacobs and all the other guys that we have uh, and how they've stepped up. If you like this content and you like the video, please subscribe. We really, really need that. Each one of you makes a difference in that March to 10,000. If you haven't already, if you can consider doing that, it is free. And how free is it, Kurt? It's free. It's free, free. If you need more free, it's free 99 and 53 cents. So there you go. It's always going to be free. This is subscribe to right here on Detroit Lions on the Proud. Now it's time for Jim's discussion topic for today. What's your news and rumors topic for today, my guy? Well, help is possibly on the way. We signed cornerback Mark Gilbert away from the practice squad of the uh, of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And he he's a speedy guy. He ran a 448 at the LFL combine. He's a six foot 192 uh, pound uh, corner. He you know what though? He fits the mold of the, the bigger corners that we're trying to get over here, kind of like a Jeff Okuda type, but he has speed. That's the difference. They're running a four four eight. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he he is a he is a, a true lion prospect because his career has been marred with injuries. He had a serious hip injury in two thousand eighteen, caused him to miss all of two games that season and the entirety of the two thousand nineteen season following surgery. Uh, in two thousand seventeen, you know, so it, it's just eesh. You know, but when healthy, as is the catchphrase for most Lions players, mm-hmm. you know, he's a pretty good corner. And uh, hopefully if he's got all those injury situations under control, maybe he can contribute in a week or two. We'll see. He's got to get he's got to get up to speed with everything first. Yeah, I, um, I look at this signing. I look at what like my man uh, LL said, I look at I'll be pleasant. What he can he do with this guy? Can he get how fast like, he can get him up to speed? And I think with his teaching abilities, I think he can get him up to speed pretty quickly. Um, I think he'll probably start playing on special teams first, and then he'll, they'll slide him, start sliding him into the rotation in a defensive backfield. So, I mean, that's my thing. Like you said, next man up. I, yep. I knew it was coming just because of the fact that we have so many people going out, in and out of the lineup because of the fact that they're getting injured. So, we just need some of that depth in in that defensive backfield room. So, uh, hey, yeah. welcome to Detroit, Mark Gilbert. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, welcome to the D. <laughs> yeah, welcome, welcome to the uh, to Detroit, Mark Gilbert. Um, I, when I saw this headline, well, I saw a couple of different headlines for this for this story, but one of them was like uh, we signed Darrell Revis's cousin, a ball hawking uh, DB from Pittsburgh's practice squad. I said, okay, hmm. so I mean, I don't know if that's just all hyperbole or anything like that, but that's I'm with it. And my, and whenever this is this is what I mean by I understand, you know, it's they're not going to reach some of our lofty goals in the beginning of the season, preseason, whatever it is, right? But 
this is a, what I overall I want to see. This is what I've been wanting for years, almost like a system. It's like, you know, if it's a let's say if it's a good defensive lineman out there, and it's like, man, you know, he's good. Like he might not even be the top, but if we can get him and get him with our coaching staff, he's gonna be a monster. He's gonna be he be able to play with us. So I think that we I think that we're there. You know, with with, with our coaching staff and things like that. So with this guy, just like what uh, what Kurt said, I thought when I when I read all that, I'm like, eh, I don't really you know whatever. But if he shows that he's getting close to it, or our you know uh, DC can get him close to it, so. I like it, man. Uh, let's let's see. You know, just with everybody going down and stuff, he'd probably get some playing time. So I, I think he'd get an actual fair shot to see what he could do. Yeah, yeah, I agree yeah, with that. I I, I don't mind. Hey, we need the help. Trust me, we need yeah, the help. help. We need definitely the help for you in Detroit because right now yeah. it's just it's a mash unit. Right now, we just need those uh those guys to come in and, and step up and, and do those things. But you know, and. Uh, you know, welcome to the D. That's all I can really say about that. Uh, you know, it's <laughs> one of those things where he, we need him. Uh, we, we really need him in Detroit uh, because we need that depth in that secondary. Hey, if you like this video, share this content, you know, subscribe to the channel, share it with friends just like yourself. If you haven't done so already, go over and check us out on Lions Nation Unite, the ultimate virtual hangout for Detroit Lions fans. You get all of your news and rumors over there. You got multiple, multiple <laughs> personalities uh, that cover the Detroit Lions it. over there on Lions Nation Unite. And like I said, you might never know. You might run into Herman Moore. You might run into Lomas Brown. You might run into a plethora of people. You know, you might run into Big Lion Man, or you might run into, you know, saying Mr. Boot Up or Dosa Dion, or you know, you might, you know, run Everything around came. and roll up on yeah. Kurt Steele. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm just yeah. saying, you know, Jim Bordeaux's over there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the coolest man in the planet. You know what I'm saying? LL's over there. So you might run into some people over there. So, and then you might run into Queen of the Proud Valerie Bordeaux. So go over there and check us out. Maniac Tim's over there. Everyone's over there. So go over and check out the content on Lions Nation Unite. What you waiting on? You know what I'm saying? I don't know what you're waiting on because you're going to go ahead and get over there. So uh, for my news and rumors topic for today, I don't know who this guy is, but he keeps saying that Penesu is a draft bust. This is former um, scout, and it's been uh, up again. Daniel Kelly comes out with another article. Oh, yeah, you know, Penesu is a bust. I'm like, how is Penesu a bust? He's played five games. He's given up sacks to some premier pass rushers. You know what I'm saying? Even you got the oh, did we'll, we'll look at uh Everson Griffin. He's kind of past his prime, but dude, Everson Griffin, even at 80% of his prime, is still better than a lot of uh pass rushers in his league. He gave up a sack to Khalil Mack. I mean, come on, man. These are you know some of the best. And then you gotta look at he shut down one of the other best pass rushers in the league in Nick Bosa. So, I mean, the guy, he's a rookie. Uh, he's just came in the league. He didn't even play last year. So he's still finding his sea legs in the NFL right now. And there's plenty of individuals uh, who have struggled, you know, coming into the league and you look at them and you're like, oh, okay, well, maybe it's not that bad. And it's not that bad. You you look at um, what's really going on in with, with Panay Sewell. I just look at him and I'm like, Panay Sewell is playing very, very well. Uh, he's doing exactly what they're they're asking of him, and I just don't understand why we're looking at him and talking about how he's a draft bust. I, I don't get it. I mean, do you guys – looking at I'm going to ask you guys. Do you guys think that this guy is a draft bust? I mean, no. I mean honestly, I mean, uh, I've me seen see. him make mistakes, but – My honest opinion a draft is bust? hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? The dude can, the dude barely got his license to drink, man. <laughs> Seriously. Right. You're going to sit here and say, Hmm, he's a bust. Cause you moved him over to left tackle. He was doing, trying to do right tackle. You move him mm -hmm. over as a rookie. He's facing the premier pass rusher from each team with a good defense. No, man. Come on now. Come on now. Yeah. Everson Griffin is a seasoned veteran. He may not have played well for Detroit or whatever, but he's played well for Minnesota. So, all right. I'm just telling you, this is stupid. What do you got, LL? I, I agree. Hell no, he's not a bust. Um, I, I just, out of curiosity, how many sacks has he given up? Not that many, right? I don't, I'm not. I think it's I know. around four or five, something like that. Okay, Maybe. let's say let's say if it is five. You know, that's one of these games for a rookie who don't who, – who they put him, that's one thing that I noticed. He don't get much help on his side. 
So it's just him and the win on that side. So, mm-hmm. you know, and if he does get beat, it takes a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, it would take an Everson Griffin to beat him, you know, because he know, you know, he got a move after a move after a counter move. So I still haven't seen Panay Sewell, you know how you, the, the the term, you know, swatting that ghost. Like, I haven't seen him, you know, just going out there and nobody's there and this, the guy's going around him. I've seen some of the other rookies, you know, but it ain't about them. So mm-hmm. I don't think he's a bust in that. If it, for him to look as good as he has, how can you say that? I think he's just somebody who, who wants us to talk about. Yeah, I mean, you look at some of the guys who have struggled as rookies, and these guys are some of the premier left tackles in the league or just tackles in the league. Andrew Thomas gave up f- four sacks in the first five games of his career. Position switch. I don't, Jake I don't want – as I was like, I don't want that comparison because Andrew Thomas, yeah. <laughs> he, was, Jake, he was looking pretty bad. But. Yeah, Jake Matthews played for the Falcons, had to switch positions. Got a got rid of Trent Williams was struggled his rookie season. So how can you you know look at these guys who struggle as rookies and now these guys are generational talents in the league? You look at Trent Williams. This is guy. He's a premier tackle in the league, but he struggled as a rookie. So how can you label someone a draft bust after five games? You know, it's just one of these. Just first of all, he's he hasn't performed as like a draft bust. So you know. It would be one of those things if he gave up like 10 sacks or something like that over the, over his first five games or he gave up eight. But it has to be around four or five sacks. And that just happens with some, you know, you get a young guy coming in the league, he had a year off. Come on, man, stop with the, stop with the nonsense, man. Just, just stop it. <laughs> this is so stupid. It's, to be honest, I, you know what? I, I not, to, not to be rude, but. We shouldn't even be commenting on this because <laughs> this is people that honestly, it's the bandwagon people is the people that, that don't really know football. And it just, Oh, you know what? Expect it, it, They expect so much out of a team that has so little, it, it yeah. really does. It really blows my mind. It does. I mean, I love this team. I'm telling you, I'm hyped about this team, but it's not for this year. And I've been nope. saying it over and over again. Have been Look at the that. talent depravity of this team. They're, this team is is so void of talent. I think one of the big college teams could beat us right now. But I don't <laughs> just <think>. kidding. <laughs> That's probably a little far fetched. But I'm just saying, it doesn't matter. You know, this is not the season that we any of us expected. Well, most of us expected that we were going to go anywhere. So that that's just my take, man. Yeah, pump the brakes, guys. Pump it, pump it for real, man. Yeah. Hey, I, hey, go ahead. No, I I I, I use that euphemism uh, when I used to talk about Stafford. You know, like think of building a championship team as building a car, and like you said, you got to have the parts to build a car, whether it's going to run or not. And we just had parts to build an office chair, like a wheelie chair. So, mm-hmm. but like you just, you know, and, and we, we're not looking awful with the parts to build, you know, w- w- what we have. So mm-hmm. once we do start getting some, you know, bigger talent, I think we do have time. Once we start getting some, you know, more talent and bigger talent. Oh, man. Yeah. You know, curse, you know, curse phrase. When we start getting who we want instead of what we want. For we'll real. Some ways right here in the NFL. <laughs> hey, if you like the content, like the video, share the video. Hey, comment and get on the bus, Gus. And get on this train to 10,000 with us right here, Detroit Lions on the Prowl. You can go over and check out more content at DetroitLionsOnTheProw.com. And while you're over there, click on that link for LionsOnTheProwShop.com. Yeah, new t-shirt. What up, no? On a Wednesday, baby. You know what it is. <laughs> yeah, shout we got it. Shout out to our guys over at Wolf. Is it What Easy. Up, Do Wednesday? It's What Up, Do Wednesday. It is so What we Up, Do Wednesday. Wednesday. So, <laughs> I, you know, out of those guys, I wore my What Up, though. But, you know, Jim's wearing that Lions on the Proud family shirt. You know, he even got one in the background. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm double really dipping to, today. <laughs> double dipping today. So, that's what we're going to do right here. So, get yeah. some a new shirts are coming out. Yeah, we have a new one out. The new kneecap biter shirt out. It's MCDC kneecap biter. You know, let, let's bite kneecaps. It looks really cool. And I think it would be great to to pick one of those up and support the show. Yeah, definitely. And you take a picture and put with your shirt. We're going we're gonna to showcase it on the show right here on Detroit Lions on the Pro and our social media sites. So now it's time to go over to who? Man, I just got to chill because the coolest man <laughs> on the show is up for his news and rumors topic for today. LL, what you got? Well, on this What Up Though Wednesday, my news and rumors topic comes from MLive.com, and the headline says, Lions linebacker Jalen Reeves-Maven getting rave reviews for showing for showing in first start of season. So this just goes to more so, you know, next man up, and next man is up. Um, just going to read a little bit of it here. 
Um, it says we have a quote here from Dan Campbell when asked about it. it said, um, I'm sorry, it said Lions, Lions coach Dan Campbell was asked if any returning players surprised him through five games, pointing to Reese Maven's play with the increased role. He said, probably Reese Maven is one of the first ones that stands out because he was, you know, he played, he played so much special teams. Campbell said on Monday, but I mean, he's over the last, but, but he's over the last three weeks, he's gotten better and better and makes plays. He's productive for us. He's been one of the first ones to stand out in my head if you're asking about one. Um, I like it. Um, another, just some more from the, uh, from the article. It says, uh, Reeves Maven, 26, had five tackles with a clutch forced fumble and recover fumble in the fourth quarter of the team's 1917 law. Um, that takeaway gave the Lions another shot that they needed in, when they needed it most with the linebacker ripping the ball away from, from, Vikings, from Vikings running back Alexander Madison uh, in the first play after the two-minute warning. He said, I mean, I didn't even know if the ball was loose. He said, it, it just was. I don't know. I wanted the ball. I guess that sounds really simple, but this is just the, uh, I guess, my in my mind, the antithesis. I'm probably saying that wrong. But of uh, of next man up, he has mm-hmm. he has shown a star in his role with the increased role. So shout out to Dalen Reeves Maven on today. What, what do you guys think? Yeah, I love I love Dan Campbell's nickname for him. He calls him Germ because Jalen <laughs> Reeves Maven J R M Germ. He's got love some that. good nicknames. He, he got some good nicknames for those guys. <laughs> but you know, I, I love. But I I've. I've been a, a fan of uh, Reese Maven, in the, especially in special teams, but I've been a fan of him since he joined the team from Tennessee. Uh, I know everybody, you know, he was very undersized when he got to Detroit. Uh, he put some weight on, uh, got some muscle on his frame, uh, but he's fast. He plays hard. And really, it was just, I mean, with that play, he really wanted to make a play for the team. And he stepped up and just ripped that ball out of the dude's hands. I mean, you know, you that's a that play was the epitome of playing through the whistle, uh, where you know his yeah. forward progress was pretty stopped, but he was still trying to go. And Reese May would say, "Screw it, I'm just gonna take the ball yeah. out." The whistle hasn't blown. The play wasn't dead, so he played and played and got us the ball back. So you know, shout out to Reeves Maven, man. He's doing this big thing. You know, you know he's part of that Maven, um, kind of you know bloodline in Detroit. You know, he had his brother, you know, not a brother, his cousin played. Uh, for the Tigers for a while, so you know, shout out to the Maven. Oh, you know I'm saying doing big Cameron things, Maven. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, what do you got, Jim? I love Jalen Reeves Maven. I think he can cover uh, um, side to side really, really well, and and I like the fact that they're giving him a chance. He, but he is a really good special teamer. That that is mm-hmm. where I like him. He, he he comes down. He flows to the ball really well. Um, he doesn't get kind of caught up. You know, makes good tackles. Uh, I like him, Perry. I, I would like to see a little bit more of um, more of him on defense, but I, I don't know. I just think he's playing really well, you know, I, and, and he's a younger guy still. We've had him for a few years, but he's still not that old. Um, but I, I like I like that dual thing there. I love him in special teams and I like him in coverage. Yeah, definitely. He, I mean, and you can. And to be honest with you the play of Anzalone has increased since the departure of Jamie Collins as well. You look at, he's been playing better over the last couple of games, got the interception yeah. uh, over the, you know, uh, in the game on Sunday versus the Vikings. So you, you look at, I think you got the mix of Reeves Maven and you got, you know, Derek Barnes coming in there. That's a three linebackers are playing, you know, they stepped their game up over the last few games. So, you know, especially in the, in Minnesota. So, those things definitely go hand in hand. And but you know how it is. Germ is, you know, saying, you know, <coughs> coughing all over the dog on offense and getting them, <laughs> them turnovers, baby. <laughs> We're coughing the ball up. So there you go. Um, if you like this content, hey, like the video, <laughs> share the video. But it's time for us to do what? Zip it and go over and check out what you had to say about yesterday's show. It's time for who the comment cards, baby. Yeah. Jim, what you got first? <laughs> Let me see. What do I got first? Let's go. All right. Whitney Bowens. I imagine a lot of us don't understand the pressure of being an NFL coach. That's absolutely true. Uh, You want to win for your fans, for the players, for the coaches, your family, and yourself. 
that was tough to watch as a Lions fan. Dan must feel like he's got a hundred years of Lions history riding on his shoulders. Oh my God. You have to think about that though. All the losing and all the, the, just the ref situations, everything that goes on as a Lions fan just seems like there's a dark cloud or possibly a curse, all this other stuff against this team. I mean, 66 yard field goal, NFL record, uh, 54 yard field goal to get us beat. I mean, just, just, and then the NFL ref specials, you know, that happened to us it, it, like Green Bay. I, I just don't, I, this team is snake bit so badly. And to have Dan Campbell shoulder all of that and still try to be professional and still try to, of course, he's going to have emotion about the situation if he gives a damn. And I think he does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Perfect way to put that. Perfect way to put that, Jim. Um, friend of the show, big main cap ice cold. Says, I think Hawk is missing due to a small injury. He is the only he is only going out to help make other team play other teams play honest. Because if he isn't out there, out on the field, teams will definitely play us different. You might be on to some cap ice mm, them. It maybe. might be something that they're not letting us in. Possibly. So, thank you for that, man. Definitely. All right. So this is an old school name. I, if you don't know what this is, he says Jagger Fail. You know. As some of that old Lagerfeld cologne, you know what I'm yeah. saying. Ah. After, <laughs> after the after the pressure, um, after Press. that pressure, I 100 yeah. percent sure that now that MCDC is the right man for the Me job. Too. I'm Me too. sure his uh, his players took notice. With that, I have a feeling we will get our first win Sunday. Keep up the great work. Enjoy the shows. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate we we enjoy doing the shows for you. So, thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks yeah. for that. Um, uh, Shane Bringert said, I have one issue that worries me. I really like Dan Campbell, Brad Holmes, and the organization right now, but I'm worried about the fans and everyone saying we like the fight and our team. And what I guess mm-hmm. worries me is that people have their sights set too high and are getting their hopes up to the point they may resent Dan Campbell and draw conclusions on him too early. We just have to. We just have to be patient as fans right now and give the organization a chance. Just my opinion. Um, I can see where you. I can see where you're going with that, uh, Shane. But I think they're saying I like the fight in the team is kind of tempering the the, the expectations because you there ain't much else to like. So you know you gotta, you know at least they fighting. You know at least at least they out there. You know playing hard. So I'm. I still like it. I don't. I don't. I don't think we're going too far this year. But I still like the fight. I like the fight. I do. Um, I'm not worried about that. No, I'm no. not worried about that. I'm just, it's just one of the things, it's going to be a tough year, but they keep fighting. They give me something to look forward to. Uh, you know, just, you know, you, you're going to uh, watch a game where they're going, your team's going to be competitive every game, even if they don't win. Let's take this on for a thought. What if we're developing our backup players right now? Just yeah. think about that. Let that set in for a while. King SJ, MCDC is showing that he can get the best out of the, his players, and that is what you want with a coach, and that goes for all sports, not just football. The results yeah. are showing, aren't showing in the win column, but we have to stick to the building plan. It will is going to take time. Absolutely, it's going to take time. Yeah, definitely. It's going to take time. And he even said that when he came in. He said it's going to take time. But we're in this microwave uh, instant you know, email where you can get something in a, in seconds. And this is not what this thing is in football. It don't work that way. You know saying? A lot of times it's, you got to build that team. And sometimes it's coaching. And we've seen that in other teams where a coach comes in and, you know, all of a sudden they're, 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 um, they're good like the Rams, but it was Jeff Fisher and not, not the talent. They had talent, but right. we just don't have the talent right now where we have the coaching. So we'll yep. fix that though. All right, so Randy Osborne says, now I've, I saw this comment and I really liked it. He said, this is the same Dan Campbell that cried when he got the job. We okay, Lions fans. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, he, he I had he remember that until this did, point. He, he did cry when he got, got hired. You know, he was emotional. <laughs> he was overcome. You know, he remember he, he thought it was the, you know, this Campbell. I thought it was the other Campbell from Iowa State. So, um you know, but Dan Campbell, he cares, uh, and I believe he's going to be successful in Detroit because I think he he really cares about his players, and I think that he's going to put uh, his players in in a in a position to win because he's growing and learning every time he goes out on the field as a head coach. Yeah, 
Absolutely. Okay, guys, we got done with the comment cards. We heard what you said. And you know what? You guys have some really good opinions. I mean, I love it when we can get you guys involved into this thing. But right now, we're going to go to my favorite part of the show, the dessert with my man, Kurt. All right. Dessert with your man, Kurt, is brought to you by Delightful Bites Cookies. You know, they got the custom cookies and desserts for any occasion. They got the football special going on right now. You got four footballs, four helmets, and four logos of your favorite team for $35. There's some really big, nice size cookie. They're big and fresh, and they're packed fresh. You get them. All you got to do is pop them in the microwave, and boom, there you go. You got some great tasting cookies right there. They sweeten up your football viewing pleasure. So, but like for bites, get your cookie on. Now, today, Dessert with Man Kurt is about one of our running backs, and he had the distinct honor of winning angry runs on tuesday from yeah. good morning football the andre swift won angry runs he put brashad brilliant with the truck stick put him on his back and just ran through that cat so he won the angry runs now you gotta look at the this, this is the third angry run uh, recipient from the lions for the past three years you got marvin jones got it last year uh in week one and then you got uh, the big fella, Adrian Peterson, won it last year as well. And this year, you got DeAndre Swift. Man, that truck stick was something else versus my man, Brashad Breeland. Man, I just kind of felt sorry for him. I'm like, oh, man, you better get up, boy. You got knocked out. <laughs> so that's what's up, man. Shout out to, shout out to my man, uh, DeAndre Swift, for winning Good Morning Football's Angry runs over there on NFL Network, man. That is something uh, to bestow, man. And I really like what he did running over Rashad Brigley, man. You, hey, man, you, you better get up, man. You don't know. You, you got knocked out. So <laughs> shout out to him. Go over and check out Delightful Bites Cookies right there on Facebook. Hey, they're, they, they definitely some good cookies, man. Delightful Bites. Get your cookie on. All right. Final thoughts for today. And I'm going to expand on something I said during the comment cards. And I'll tell you this much. What if we are training up our backup players and starting roles? Imagine when we start to get through the draft and through free agency and with all the stuff that we're going to have in the next couple of years, imagine how that can translate to us getting the starters and having a solid depth and having a solid rotation at different positions. Because right now we are, we're actually playing backups uh, as starters because of injury and all that other stuff, but this could really benefit us in the future. That's what I see with this today. We have our, our members only meeting gold members. If you're not a gold member and you want to upgrade to get into this zoom call, go and do that right now. Uh, click the join now button button right by the uh the bottom of this uh video to do that and that's three o'clock today eastern standard time for our friends on the west coast yep yep make sure you uh make sure you guys are there i'll be there um my final thoughts on this uh what up though wednesday um happy wednesday have a great wednesday uh you know things ain't looking so great we got injuries all over the place on five but you know keep the hope alive man keep the up with hope down with Dope or down with nope in this case, but <laughs> but um yeah man let's uh you know let's uh, let's keep it going and um and uh, the LNU app that Lions Nation Unite app come on man that 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 chat was so good I, I normally take notes during the games so I can talk, talk about it on the on the show and I was in there chatting it up so join us in the chat hey definitely all right so for me my my uh, my final thoughts for today is you know it's one of those things where you're going to have to keep playing. You got to keep fighting. And I think the Lions will do that. Uh, Evan Brown's been playing uh, really good football. So, I mean, but again, shout out to Frank Ragnall. I hope you have a speedy recovery, my guy. And we'll see you. Definitely see you next season. Uh, one thing you got to do, if you if you, you know we should go over to Lions on the Proud Shop.com, but go over to Fanatics.com. I got some new gear right here. I got the Salute to Service. I got the T-shirt. You know, I've already wore the cap already. So go over there, click the link, and click the link in the description, and you know, a portion of the proceeds from that link go to help us, you know, grow this channel. And, and you know, you're gonna get some Lions gear anywhere. Salute to service gear is now out. So go over there and support uh, your military veterans. You know, like myself, those organizations. And when you buy salute to service gear, none of those proceeds go to Nike, 
New Era, or the NFL, they all go to veteran organizations. So go over and check out the Salute to Service gear over there on fanatics.com. Now it's time to do what? Let's take that stroll, baby, over to the Walk of Fame. Let's see who we got. Detroit Drew, DSA member and, you know, new father. So go over and, you know, check out uh, Detroit Drew on YouTube as well. You got some great business content over there. You got Midwest Lion, the Latino Leo, Leo, Brian Stover, Bo Gagrius, Justin, let's crack one open, 10K, Sage, Robert, Sub Z, Trap City Boys Entertainment, Crystal Wiley, Bubba Bo, John Kapler, R. Allen, the Flintstone himself, Jim Bo G., we have David Anderson, and you know he knows everything. Because why? Because he's the everything king, rounding out our bronze members. We have silver members. We have Nomas J, Jason Porter's Cap Ice Cold, the bat signals in the sky. But who? The Batman of the 313. We have John Martin. We have uh, Go, uh, excuse me. We have Mr. Scotty the Bear. We have Go Lions. And our good members, we have. Michael Huck, Justin D, Pride 74, Doug Prince 72. We have the inspirational Turner C. Burley. We have Dominic Davis, Larry McQuiston, yeah, Bob Korowski. The tornado is a gold member. So the He's a gold member. Is yeah. Blowing yeah. through the gold <laughs> over here. We got Matthew Ferguson, Randall Flag 606, <laughs> Miles Gibbs, uh. the Gridiron Blitz, Mr. Rough and Raw himself, North and Ken. Stay safe on those road raids yes my dude. sir and then we have the doctor dr detroit is always, always in. in to become a member of the wall of the fame click the join now button in the description or the detroit lines on the proud logo at the bottom of the screen yep and this has been a good show i really just want you to think about those things you know I want you to think about, you know, it's a build. This is the first year of the build. The cupboards cupboards were kind of left bare by the last regime. And he's doing the best job he can, as in Dan Campbell and the coaching staff and everyone to, to make this team a good, good enough team, but yet not break the bank uh, to fix our salary cap situation and, and, and to not overspend, to get the right draft picks. All that stuff is going, going right for us. So the future is looking good. Please don't give up on Dan Campbell and this regime too quickly. That's all I have to say about that. Now, Kurt, you know, I think we got one thing left to do in this show, and that's take us home. All right. You know who we are. We are Detroit Lions on the prowl. You're home for Detroit Lions news and rumors. Go ahead and get on this ride, Clyde. Click the link. Subscribe to the channel. You know, it's free. Free, free, free 99 and 53 cent free. But you know what it is. It's hump day, baby. It is a Wednesday. The grind is getting tough, you know, but we got a downhill for the rest of the week. So it's going to be okay. And if you look at Detroit, right? Detroit is the epitome of the word team, right? Team together, everyone achieves more. And together, they plan together. And once we get these guys uh, where we can play together and get the talent around this, uh, the individuals that we need is going to be a super team. We're going to go out there and we're going to make some waves in the NFL. So don't give up on us yet because there's just some things that, like we said, the, the cover was bare and we're doing the best we got with the hand we were dealt. So that's all we can do. But, you know, I want you to do something for me. You know, spend some time with your loved ones. Be kind. And, you know, take this napkin. Mm -hmm. off your mouth mm -hmm. finish your drink and mm -hmm. get back to work baby and whatever you do in life and my drink's the mm -hmm. boss up ball out and be the best version of you that you can be for my fellas ll and jim this is kurt Steele, and we will holla at you real soon